can start this. Participants will keep on joining. So keeping the interest of time, we can start the session. So good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Daman Sharma. Uh, from, uh, I'm assistant professor at Maulana Zad Medical College. And I invite you all in this academic lecture series that we are conducting under the aegis of Haryana AOI. So today we have an important topic that is allergic rhinitis, which is, uh, I think, the need of an R. And uh, it is very important topic as far as the uh, MS and DNB uh, curriculum is concerned. So we have a very expert and senior consultant, uh, Dr. Sarika Verma from Bluegram. will be speaking on uh, uh, today's topic. She'll be delivering this topic today. And uh, so I can say that she, uh, ma'am, is uh, an inspiration and motivation to most of the people who have uh, opted allergy as their branch. And recently, uh, ma'am had organized a session of uh, the name of crosstalk in uh, Haryana and Gurugram. So I've attended this, that session and it inspired me also. So I'm uh, very keen and interested in joining this uh, uh, certified course of uh, allergy and to know more about this uh, allergy because uh, this domain is not uh, only related to ear or nose, it's a, it's a one airway uh, disease. Uh, so we, uh, we had uh, the respiratory symptoms also, and we need to treat the allergy patients as a, as a whole. So uh, before uh, introducing them, I would like to introduce our chairpersons for uh, today's session. We have Dr. Uh, J.C. Pasi, sir. So, well, sir needs no introduction. Sir is a teacher of teachers, and uh, he's my mentor and guide from Alana Zar Medical College. And uh, uh, I've been fortunate to work as uh, PG, SR, and uh, initial days of my assistant professorship under his supervision. So I welcome you, sir. Thank you for sparing your time uh, for this session. And uh, our second uh, chairperson is Dr. Bhushan Patil, sir. Bhushan Patil, sir, is a, a senior uh, 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 consultant and uh, leading ENT practitioner at uh, Guru Gram. With the, uh, and uh, he is the owner of uh, Meher's uh, clinic at Guru Gram. Sir has uh, done his graduation, post-graduation. Uh, from MGIMS Varda, and he's the ex uh, president and secretary of AOI Gurugram. Sir has a keen interest in academic activities, and uh, it has been unfortunate that because of his uh, evening OPDs, he's not able to attend uh, our evening sessions. And, uh, sir, that uh, point will be taken care of, and uh, next from next year's, we'll keep the time uh, that suits all of us, and we'll have a maximum participation. So, I would like to request uh, our three persons to introduce our uh, today's speaker. Dr. Sarika Verma, and then we can start the sessions. Okay, welcome, Dr. Sarika. Hello. Thank you Am very much, sir. You're Dr. Audience. Sarika is a very, very well known person already in uh, uh, at least in Delhi and NCR and entire North India. She is known for her uh, keen interest in allergy, uh, not uh, nasal allergy only. She is treating this allergy as a whole. Uh, in the upper airway, the, as uh, told by Dr. Raman. Uh, Dr. Sarika, I have known her since the time she entered Delhi. And uh, I have seen her growing. And she has grown up uh, very nicely. She is a multifaceted character. She is not only an ENT surgeon. She is an activist. She is uh, active in politics, social causes, noise pollution. And she fights for the cause of doctors. You can see her post most of the time in uh, newspapers. Uh, she is there and Haryana AOI, National AOI Forum, she is seen. So I don't need to introduce her much, uh, except that uh, she is uh, the president of Gurgaon, Gurugram branch of ENT surgeons. And uh, she is also heading the women unit of IMA uh, in her uh, Gurgaon town. And I think without wasting uh, time, I will request her to uh, start her lecture, please. So thank you very much. I've known you for, I think, 20 odd years when I met you in Molanaza for the first time. And I'm grateful that you've given me this opportunity. I'm also thankful to Dr. Raman, Dr. Surinder Singhal and Dr. Rupinder Ranga from AOI Haryana. It's, uh, you know, Aapno Desh Haryana, Jab Sab Jaga Ja Ke Baat Karte Hain, Toh Haryana Mein Hum Aapne Sab Se Jada Aapne Students Ki Help Kiyo Na Karein. Ye Alag Baat Hai Ki Hume Sar Ek Alag Jaddo Jahe Chhedni Padegi Ki Jis Tara Baaki Jaga Hamari Haryana Mein Fees Jo Bhoj Jada Bada Gai Hai. So that is something that I think we should work on at the political level and ensure that it comes back to normal because otherwise more and more children will not want to take up colleges in Haryana. Can you see my screen? Yes, 
Yes, ma'am. We can see your screen. Yes, yes. All yes. Right. Start so, this slide show. Yeah, I'll start this. Right. So today's topic is management of allergic rhinitis, and I have time till Dr. Raman. What time? Ma'am, uh, one hour. Okay, yeah, great. So we'll we'll go slowly yeah. then. Because I have a lot of slides. But mostly 15 se 20 diya jata hai where I'm rushing speed talking. But uh, because it's a session for postgraduates, yes. we'll, I'll be happy to take any questions at the end of it. So I have a chain of clinics called Allergy Talk. I have uh, 12 centers in five cities, Gurgaon, Delhi, Mumbai, Udaipur and Chandigarh. I've been doing work on allergies for 20 years. I started my journey thanks to Dr. Uh, S.K. Kakkar who was my uh, mentor and guide patron, uh, so to speak. And uh, he told me that allergy pe bahut kam kam ho rahe, and allergy is the thing of the future. And now I see that hindsight in 20 years, the amount of growth this uh, it's needed because seeing the AQIs cross 500 every winter for four months and how pollutants act as irritants and increase allergic rhinitis and other systemic allergies. It is, I, uh, I think it's a matter of great honor and pride that I've taken this topic in as my mainstream. So allergy disease are a global public health issue. Uh, and over the last uh, multiple decades, they have gone up multiple times. So earlier on in the 60s, where you had uh, allergic rhinitis of uh, the incidence was 10%. And now it is almost 20 to 30%. And in children, they say that even up to 45 to 50%, the pediatricians say that that is the level of allergies that uh, our pediatric uh, population suffers. And asthma has also grown up several, several times. So uh, there are allergy, rhinitis is not an isolation. It's a disease that has multiple comorbid conditions associated with asthma. Almost 20% of patients with allergic rhinitis are asthma. And almost 80% of patients with asthma have allergic rhinitis. Also atopic dermatitis, a lot of patients have allergic conjunctivitis, but you have to ask them the history. When you, because they will only say sneezing, then you ask them, do your eyes And then they will say, yes, it's a little bit, it's a little bit. So these are things that we must always ask. And uh, especially in Haryana, we'll see that a lot of patients come and say, it's a sinus problem. You will ask, it's a nose block, it's a headache, then they will say, it's a headache. So allergy and sinus are interconnectedly used very liberally, especially with the uh, uh, rural population or let's say the less uh, English-speaking population. Nasal polyps, as you all know, AFRS is again a, a function of allergy. Recurrent upper respiratory infections, otitis media with effusion, and that also causes, uh, secondarily, it causes uh, sleep disorders. It aggravates adenoid hypertrophy, it reduces the quality of life, and uh, uh, OSA, obstructive sleep apnea, is worsened because of uncontrolled allergies. And uh, children with OMEs, they develop learning and attention impairment. And uh, there are studies from the UK that say that both English and maths, uh, the primary school children, their scores are weaker when you have uh, recurrent OMEs. And of course, the adenoids cause uh, facial uh, changes, which are called the adenoid facial. The allergic march concept was given by Catani et al. in 1999. And it basically says that allergies start in your younger age. By the age between the age of one and five, you may develop uh, skin allergies, which typically are skin crease allergies that in the mildest form, and they may be generalized urticaria in the severe form. So atopic uh, allergies gradually over time, these should be identified early. With children, you have to ensure that you moisturize very regularly and you treat, if possible, identify the allergen so that you can avoid it from the diet and prevent this allergic march where, you know, respiratory and eventually asthma develops. So if it is untreated, allergic rhinitis can become asthma in almost up to 30% of the patients. So it's very important role. So, you know, my friend who's a pulmonologist says, if you do your job properly, I'll be out of business. So ENTs have to understand the uh, enormity of the situation that you have. If you rok lenge, to we will stop the wheeze. So it's very important that you not only treat it, do not trivialize allergy. Haan, ye to allergy hai, ye to kahin jane ne wali hai, iske jina padega. These are things that I have heard when I was an undergraduate. And these are things that I refuse to 
uh, accept now and the my the tagline of my uh, clinic name is that allergy is treatable so that is what gives patients hope and they come to me very uh, surprised ki sare doctor to kehte allergy treat nahi hote to aap keh rahe allergy treatable hai so allergy definitely treatable hai aur aapne apne patients ko aise chhodna nahi hai various kinds of allergies are there other than allergic rhinitis and bronchitis you have urticaria atopy uh, i'm seeing a lot of patients with angioedema i don't know because more and more complicated are patients are coming to me i have seen patients with uvular edema i have seen a couple of patients with uh, who syncope every time they have a severe allergy so uh, more complicated patients are definitely coming to me patients with food allergies very specific there's a child who told me ki मिल्क बिस्किट हम मिल्क तो बंद है मिल्क बिस्किट भी खाते हैं तो यहाँ पे एक रेड रैश हो जाता है सो एवरी पेशेंट टीचर्स यू समथिंग न्यू ड्रग रिएक्शन समथिंग दैट्स वेरी ह्यूज बट वी आर नॉट ओनली एट द टिप ऑफ द आइस बर्ग इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू ट्रीट बिकॉज एलर्जिक द ट्रस्टिंग फॉर ड्रग्स इज नॉट वेरी एक्यूरेट and avoidance is the best way forward we do a skin prick test as well as a patch test for drugs but even at the end of the entire process i'm only able to tell them with uh, not with great certainty that you know at this dose it's not reacting i don't know ki full dose mein aap lenge to reaction hoga ya nahi so drug reaction is something that we really need to work on and i hope that modern technology can take us forward here contact allergies for example a strap of the uh, on the leather on your uh, arm of your watch or your slippers contact uh, dermatitis is actually not a allergy per se because allergy is ig mediated hypersensitivity reaction contact dermatitis is a type uh, d so it's not a uh, type 1 it's a type 4 uh, ig uh, uh, hypersensitivity reaction so contact dermatitis is not allergy please don't tell patients that it's an allergy allergic rhinitis is an inflammation of the uh, nasal mucosa it is typically ig mediated and uh, it typically presents with excessive sneezing nasal blockage watery nose nasal itching itchy eyes and watery eyes so you should ask if a patient says chinke aati hai then all the other four things we must always ask so in my prescription paper i make a note when the patient comes to you so sneezing on a snot score of 0 to 4 nasal blockages 0 uh, uh, to 4 watery eyes as well as uh, watery nose as well as itchy nose always scale it so that that helps you decide whether it is a mild moderate or severe disease you know that i'll just yeah so coming to the area classification this was given in 1990 so if today any of you especially post graduates you write seasonal or uh, perennial rhinitis so i'll say that you are out of the you have to go you come into the modern generation and talk about intermittent allergic rhinitis or persistent seasonal or per perennial jo hai aapke pichle do generations ka kaam tha aapki generation mein aapne seasonal or perennial ka naam hi nahi lena it is now persistent allergic rhinitis it is intermittent allergic rhinitis be scientific how can you just say things like ye to seasonal allergy hai seasonal allergy lay person bolega as a ent post graduate you will always grade your allergic rhinitis and say whether it's intermittent or persistent intermittent is less than 4 days in a week or less than 4 weeks in a year persistent is greater than 4 days in a week and greater than 4 weeks in a year further classified into mild moderate and severe mild is if it doesn't impair their normal life and it's moderate severe if it causes impairment of their sleep it makes them miss work it makes them miss school it makes them not want to get out of bed so these are this is, will help you डिसाइड कि आगे आपने करना क्या है इसको मेडिकल मैनेजमेंट पे मैनेज करें या इनको एलर्जी uh, की ट्रीटमेंट की जरूरत है सो दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट स्लाइड प्लीज इम्प्रिंट इट इन योर हेड बिकॉज दिस विल हेल्प यू अ लॉट एंड इफ यू वांट यू कैन टेक अ दिस इज अवेलेबल एवरीवेयर द एरिया गाइडलाइन take a print out and uh, laminate it and put it on your wall so that it always in your head that allergic rhinitis is a very specific thing and we must treat it scientifically so for me the uh, so the important thing that you have to understand and ask from the patient is when did it start ye nahi ki do din pehle allergy ke shuru hui to main aaj hi iska allergy test bhi karu sab kuch aaj hi kar do so take a detailed history whether it's how, how did it start people will tell you we moved from arunachal pradesh to delhi tab shuru hua ya uh, it's been there since childhood ya off and on hota hai duration how many whether it's weeks months or years what is the medication requirement do we need a tablet daily or alternate day or three days make a note of these things on a prescription paper because these are important and most importantly does it impact the quality of life see sneezing up 
एज अ नॉर्मल पर्सन यू डोंट रियलाइज हाउ डिफिकल्ट एलर्जी क्राइनाइटिस कैन बी बिकॉज इन साउथ इंडिया जब वो थाली बांध रहे होते हैं शादी के मंडप में अगर कोई छींक दे तो वो प्रोसेस रुक जाता है इमेजिन दैट पर्सन नॉट बींग एबल टू गो टू अटेंड अ वेडिंग ऑफ अ क्लोज पर्सन की पता नहीं छींक मार दूंगा राइट right? सो so, जैसे हमारे नॉर्थ इंडिया में बोलते हैं कि अगर आप घर से बाहर निकल रहे छीक मार दिए तो भाई दो मिनट बैठ जाओ कि बुरा काम होने वाला तो इमेजिन समबडी हू स्नीजिंग डे इन डे आउट पचास से सौ छीके मारे वो क्या उठेगा क्या बैठेगा कहाँ जाएगा सो हाउ मच इज द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ द क्वालिटी ऑफ देयर लाइफ दिस इज ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट family is still lot of people will ask you uh, because of, is this going to spread to my wife is it because of my wife that i have got this allergy and you have to explain the genetics if there is no family history then you have a 15% chance of developing spontaneous uh, allergic rhinitis if one parent is allergic 20 to 40% chance if two parents are allergic 60 to 80% chance of allergic rhinitis so such patients should be counseled that bachche mein jab bhi symptom shuru ho to aap bahut jaldi allergy testing karke immunotherapy avoidance karenge taki unko full blown asthma na ho this is important because like thalassemia minor we are we are ruling it out before marriage to ye bhi aapko thoda sa dhyan rakhna padega uh differential diagnosis allergic rhinitis and non allergic non allergic rhinitis are syndromes like idiopathic uh non uh, non allergic rhinitis with eosinophilia infectious occupational drug hormonal irritant food emotional atrophic and gastro and uh, gastro esophageal reflux uh one is uh, gustatory rhinitis a lot of people will tell you hum mirchi khate hain ya kuch garam khate hain to ye uh, uh rhinitis hone lagta hai so that i have done a skin trick test and found that they were allergic to bread and uh, pudina ki chutney which they used to have for breakfast every day so if you do allergy test and you are able to identify and eliminate that from the diet so those things get resolved otherwise again uh, like i said uh, my primarily will be talking about allergic rhinitis so how do you diagnose detailed history like we've already discussed anti rhinoscopy look for pallor of the turbinate you'll usually find that the pallor of the entire mucosa is almost white it may be boggy you can have inferior turbinates which are uh, swollen up even mulberry like sometimes they may be so congested that they appear blue and uh, always look for a uh, uh, middle me at us is there a, a polyp i remember there was a thesis somewhere that, that said that almost 54 patients or uh, 54% patients with allergic rhinitis had some sort of a middle me at us polyp so uh, if you are not able to see it on uh, anti rhinoscopy you can always do a, a diagnostic nasal endoscopy more so in patients who are blockers so for blockers you should do a, 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 a endoscopy that will help you identify the spurs and any polyps <coughs> always always auscultate the chest look for a wheeze the basic blood workup will help you especially if it's eosinophilia and patients with the cough that is not getting better a three week course of hetrazan and a deworming gentle once tonight and once after two weeks works like a charm तो बिफोर यू जंप टू अदर थिंग्स बेसिक ईस्नोफिलिया का एक बार जरूर देख लीजिए एंड यू कैन हेल्प द पेशेंट गेट बेटर allergy test by skin prick method i'll talk to you more in detail serum ig um, you can, most patients will actually come to you with a high uh, ig ki ya to normal hai to allergy nahi hai ya bahut high hai kya kare i have seen a serum ig of almost 40000 also so ig ke liye bahut zyada panic mat kare the only tool i think it acts is for getting a patient to see an allergologist so that's a the only good thing out of it agar i have seen allergic rhinitis with a normal ig also <coughs> so having a normal serum ig does not mean that you don't have an allergy serum specific ig there are uh, some uh, labs which do a good job but a good test done will cost you between 12 to 18000 ye jo random 2000 4000 wale test hote they are very useless they don't help your patient and you can't start immunotherapy on the basis of a blood test and the specificity of this test no unless wo, it is done from a good lab the specificity is almost less than 50% so i don't take the blood test very seriously also so component testing is something that's come up in bombay component testing basically is जो हाउस डस्ट माइट के भी आगे कंपोनेंट्स हैं या कैट डैंडर के कंपोनेंट्स हैं उस पर दे आर एबल टू आइडेंटिफाई व्हाट कंपोनेंट कॉजेज द थिंग बट द थिंग इज दैट कंपोनेंट इम्यूनोथेरेपी इज नॉट अवेलेबल सो इवन इफ आई टेल माय पेशेंट टू डू अ कंपोनेंट टेस्ट हाउ इज इट हेल्पिंग द पेशेंट कि उसके डस्ट माइट के विंग से है या उसके लेग से है या उसके बॉडी से है 
how is it helping the patient unless there is a clinical significance i don't believe in doing useless testing so important thing is effective treatment and management and uh, guidelines uh, essentially is uh, the mainstay of uh, allergic rhinitis treatment is pharmacotherapy and if where and when required you can start immunotherapy i'll be speaking to you a lot more in detail environmental control and patient education so uh or uh, so usually intranasal corticosteroids are the drug of choice and when the patient first comes to you ideally you should do a antihistamine which is non sedative and intranasal corticosteroids for up to 2 to 4 weeks once their symptoms are under control you can also tell them that if 3 days ke andar they can come back for a review if they are better you can continue the medicine if they are not better you can add an extra medicine and uh, if they feel very sleepy with the medicine you can change the antihistamine otherwise you can call them after 4 weeks and then we can decide how they are and what needs to be done so intranasal corticosteroids are the drug of choice especially for nasal polyps they are safe for long term use they do not cause dependence always explain to your patient that this is a steroid because they will go read up then they will come back and say doctor sahab hum dawai nahi denge and these days these companies have made the steroid so expensive almost 400 to 520 rupees ka ye spray aata hai so please explain to the patient and i always tell the patients in my clinic this is your spray shake the spray bend forward keep your mouth open one puff here one puff here do not pehle kehte the na aise karke aise angle mein dalo and then tell the patient to sniff that is really not to be done tell the patient to one puff here one puff here whatever medicine is needed it goes as a spray it touches the nasal mucosa it gets contact with it and that is the organ the target organ so no pulling it inside because most of it then just goes to the uh, oropharynx gives you not a very nice taste agar aapne khud karke kar dekha hai see that they bend forward and put one foot puff breathe through the mouth so that very little actually goes inside and tell them that the uh, uh, bioavailability is less than 0.3% so that means 0.3% of um, a few micrograms so that's 1000th of a gram it's very safe so it improves all the symptoms of allergic rhinitis and uh, uh, oral antis means of course you know all your companies will tell you that this is your best medicine that is your best medicine ideally it's your choice what you take but i would always suggest that you find something that is the least sedative option there are couple of very good uh, medicines one is fexofenadine one is bilastin and loratadine these three are my choice what happens is levocetrizine causes a lot of sedation uh, chlorpheniramine and malate i do not use cetrizine i do not use also as a specialist you have to give something different agar aap wohi montreal se utha ke dete i'm sorry to say but you know it's very the commonest drug most patients are using it and coming to aapko kuch different to dena padega you have to sound you know they sound smarter than the regular guy cetrizine is safe in children even though it causes sedation and it can be given in pregnancy in pregnancy in fact loratadine can also be given and uh, even though none of the studies say that uh, which medicines are safe if you need to give a nasal intranasal spray mometazone can be given in pregnancy so uh, uh, intranasal antihistamines are a good addition to our armamentarium they are very effective in releasing sneezing and itching can be given up to four times a day especially patients with acute rhinitis in combination with intranasal corticosteroids they can be given up to 15 days that's what is recommended but do not use it in children it doesn't have a great taste and also explain to the patient how to take it leukotriene receptor antagonists they have now come with a black box warning monty lucas now says that you should uh, not use it more than 6 weeks uh, there are studies from the nhs that say that you know it's very uh, it can cause psychiatric effects and even suicidal tendencies in children so be careful because i know pediatrician who are using uh montelukar slivocet in combination for years i have patients who non or sal kha rahe hain so please use this with caution and always educate your patients uh, you can use it as a step up especially in patients with uh, asthma uh, and hyperactive airway disease it's a very good drug but remember to step down and uh, not more than 6 weeks right so and sometimes i have a lot of time seen that uh, montelukar slivocet in combination causes skin allergy dependence crawling sensation withdrawal and so this is something that i use with caution you can add oral decongestants like a, 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 a ibastin decongestant or uh, intranasal uh, decongestants please use with caution agar aap dete bhi hain 
तो उनको बोलिए तीन दिन से ज्यादा नहीं लेना बिकॉज दे गिव सच ए मैजिकल रिलीफ दैट पेशेंट थिंक यार ये तो तुम्हारा नेजल स्प्रे स्टीरोड बेकार है ये वाला तो फटाफट आराम आ जाता है देन यू हैव पेशेंट हु कम टू राइनाइटिस मेडिकमेंटोस एंड डिपेंडेंट कई कई साल फर्स्ट थिंग आई हैव टू डू इज डीएडिक दिस पेशेंट्स एंड देन प्रोसीड टू अदर थिंग्स जलनेती वो पेशेंट वांट्स इट्स अ वेरी गुड थिंग इट विल नॉट क्लीन द एलर्जी बट इट रिमूव्स द म्यूकस फ्रॉम द साइनसेस सो इट हेल्प्स स्टीम इनहेलेशन इज नॉट वेरी इफेक्टिव बट समबडी वांट्स टू यूज दे कैन क्रोमोलोम्स दे हैव सेड दैट बट आई हैव नॉट यूज आइदर आइप्रोट्रोपियम इन एनी ऑफ माय पेशेंट्स and capsaicin spray i have seen it uh, but i have not used it so oral steroids should be used with caution and only in patients who are not responding to your medicine like i said do din baad wapis bulao if they are not better only then because haryana punjab mein ek tendency hai ki har ek patient ko def cot 6 mg to likhna hi hai why isolon 10 mg likhna hi hai so over the years the last 20 years i have continuously been speaking about it talking about it and uh now i see that the newer generation writing less and less steroids but oral steroids are not a treatment and uh, we have written the guidelines for uh, allergic rhinitis treatment in india two years back during covid and we have clearly said not more than 5 days so i request all of you to please be aware of this so this is the model so you have to step up antihistamine add a steroid you can add a leukotriene receptor add saline nasal douching avoid triggers step up the therapy if not better and eventually add immunotherapy and then you step down the treatment as goes so tell the patient bar bar mere paas aane ki zarurat nahi hai jab symptom ho ye tablet aur nasal spray le liya karo jab aapko इससे भी आराम नहीं आया या आपको इन्फेक्शन है तो ही आप मेरे पास आए तो प्लीज आई सीन मेनी ऑफ यू से कि हाँ एंटीबायोटिक ले लो एजिथ्रोमाइसिन एंड अमोक्सिलिन आर सो मिस यूज फॉर एलर्जिक राइनाइटिस इट्स नॉट फनी ये एंटीबायोटिक हैज नो रोल इन एलर्जिक राइनाइटिस सो प्लीज डू नॉट गिव इट एवर एंड एलर्जी के लिए एलर्ज एक प्रिस्क्रिप्शन लिखो कि भाई एलर्जी हो तो ये दवाई अपने आप ले लो बार बार मेरे पास मत आओ बिकॉज एलर्जिक राइनाइटिस वॉट हैपन इज पेशेंट दो चार बार आते हैं दुखी हो जाते हैं कि हर बार डॉक्टर साहब यही देते हैं तो अगर आप एंटीबायोटिक साथ में लिख रहे हैं तो हर बार वो एंटीबायोटिक भी साथ में ले रहे हैं तो उनको बोलिए कि ये दो दवाइयां उसको बॉक्स कर दीजिए अपने दैट दिस कैन बी टेकन विदाउट सीइंग मी तो दैट विल हेल्प देम बिकॉज आफ्टर ऑल यू नो पेशेंट है लॉन्ग टर्म रिलेशनशिप अगर आपने प्रैक्टिस करना है पेशेंट शुड ऑलवेज अंडरस्टैंड दैट यू आर ऑन देयर साइड यू आर हेल्पिंग देम फाइट अ डिजीज एंड उनको ये नहीं लगना चाहिए डॉक्टर के पास यार पांच सौ हजार रुपए देने पड़ेंगे एक और ट्रिप लगेगा दे शुड लुक फॉरवर्ड टू कमिंग एंड सींग यू बिकॉज दे नो दैट यू आर वर्किंग देयर बेस्ट इंटरेस्ट एंड आई हैव सीन दैट इन द एंड लॉन्ग टर्म वेरी ओल्ड फैशन एथिक्स आई हैव लर्न फ्रॉम डॉक्टर कक्कर एंड दाई डॉक्टर पासीज जनरेशन दैट वेन यू पुट द पेशेंट्स वेल बींग ओवर योर्स तो ऑलवेज यू हैव गुड रिजल्ट एंड लॉन्ग टर्म आपका नाम भी अच्छा बनेगा सो so, uh, coming to various kinds of allergy testing there's a blood test skin prick test intradermal test was done many years back it is condemned agar koi abhi kar rahe hain to unko nahi karna chahiye this causes uh, uh, can cause anaphylaxis and death and intradermal is to be uh, uh, condemned and patch test like i said we do it for metals we do it for drugs and contact dermatitis so uh, various tests are available uh, the choice is between a skin prick test and a blood test the blood test is uh, um the skin prick test measures the ig that is bound to the mast cell so it's very very specific the serum uh, specific ig measures the floating ig so it may give you a false picture so skin prick testing is safe quick reliable painless repeatable it's visible to the patient patient khud bata deta ji number 4 mein itna hai isme number 1 mein sabse zyada itching ho rahi thi and it is visible to them to unko ye nahi pata ki aap matlab unko pata hai ki aap jhoot nahi bol rahe it's very easy to convince them ki dekhiye ye wala hai aur this is what your allergic to it's lot more economical so blood test or immediate bhi ho jata hai 15 20 minute mein aapko result aa jata hai so according to all the organization world allergy organization gallen yaki uh, american academy australian academy all of them say that skin prick test is the drug of uh, is the uh, investigation of choice and we use blood allergy test only as a backup where it is not possible skin prick testing in children is very safe i have done the smallest baby i have done is 8 months old but routinely 2 years plus we are doing it and uh, uh, it's, it's i mean it's such a tiny prick that 90 95% of your children don't even cry if they cry it's because of anxiety not because of the pain so it's very safe and in children below 5 i try to do as little as possible either if it's a food i do a couple of food jo parent bolte hain 
और अगर उनको कॉफ है जो हाइपर रिएक्टिव एयरवे डिजीज जो है पीडियाट्रिक के साथ आई है सीरीज ऑफ चिल्ड्रन सो दैट आई हैव नाउ ह्यूज सीरीज आई थिंक फोर फाइव हंड्रेड किड्स आई गॉट सो देर आई जस्ट डू डस्ट माई टेस्टिंग इट हेल्प वेन वी आइडेंटिफाई दी एलर्जन सो एरो एलर्जन आर द मोस्ट कॉमन डस्ट माइट पोलन सम इंसेक्ट समटाइम एनिमल्स एंड मोल्स uh hazard rust mites are responsible for more than 50% of the allergies then intermittent allergic rhinitis or seasonal allergies are maybe because of pollen some of the persistent allergies can also be because of pollen uh cyanodon and parthenium are two things that are persistent and holoptia and uh, are a few things which are give you very strong seasonal allergies and uh, mold 7 to 10 percent molds i take them seriously only in afrs when i need to give them immunotherapy for recurrent polyps insects you have to tell them to avoid i know there are a lot of people who give you immunotherapy for insects but i don't think that it's needed because you can just eliminate them and animal dander if you have a, i have had three patients with very severe cat allergies and if avoidance doesn't work you can give them immunotherapy if they don't want to live about away from their cats so ideally i do the test on the forearm but the forearm and the back both the options are available once in a while we need to do in the back suppose the patient has urticaria even after one day they are not able to stop the antihistamine then we may have to do on a pad any space where uh, there is no scarring no tattoos and uh, so but the thing is that you can't do some part on the arm and some part on the back because the back gives you a larger induration so if you're going to do it on the back the entire test should be done on the back otherwise both the forearms usually are more than enough even in small children to do your test completely the test is fairly simple but the important thing is that you get a certified course because without that you are not legally allowed to do allergy testing so uh, multiple courses are available across the country and uh, how you do the test is you apply the medicine and you prick it and uh, in 15 to 20 minutes you take a reading and you measure it in millimeters you measure the induration and make a note that's how we apply the medicine and uh, the prick i'll just show you so ideally see the prick has to be really mild you do not have to cause a puncture wound there should be no blood if a blood has come out that means that you've gone too deep and the test is not going to come fine i know somebody who does a skin how they do this is they take the needle and put it under the arm and turn it 360 degrees and i think that's just that's just terrible things to do with your patient so your patients are not guinea pigs learn the right right way and do the right thing Uh, when i was in madras medical college they used to tell us before we let you touch a nose you have to do 100 diagnostic nasal endoscopy so you know and what is the skull base you know that where is the orbit you don't injure anything you get your orientation right similarly when you do a spt at least do it on 20 30 patients free of charge so that you get the hang of it aap galat kaam nahi kare apni skin pe prick karke dekhi you should understand how deep it's going whether it's causing any pain or not because when i do the test it's literally painless nobody even winces that you should be that gentle with it okay so uh when you measure the reading in 15 minutes this is how you measure it in millimeters you are measuring the induration not the erythema sometimes you will find that there is a large erythema around pura red ho rakha hai almost 20 25 mm but the only thing that we have to measure is the erythema uh, induration not the erythema and once you do the test the outcome is allergen avoidance uh, i'll discuss one or two slides on that medical management like i've also mentioned and then immunotherapy there are two kinds i'll discuss that in detail nine foods are responsible for 90% of the food allergies to aapko kai bar patient bolenge nahi ji aap itne aur test because i what i have a kit is uh, 55 foods and 55 aero allergens so that includes uh, rice wheat maize potato most of the vegetables most of the dals uh, besan is a very uh, or gram kabuli is a very good uh, important allergen milk and all the milk products all the nuts and a lot of non veg and when you find that prawns and crab will have a cross reactivity with house dust mite so agar patient bolta hai ki nahi main to prawn khata hu mujhe kuch nahi hota so tell them that house dust mites have a cross reactivity with prawns so agar aapko aa raha hai to this is just a cross reactivity so if it is a food allergen you tell the patient that to, you have to eliminate that particular food for two months and then is there something called the oral food challenge where you reintroduce one food per week after two months ek hafte mein ek food shuru karenge 
on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, every 48 hours. And then make a note, food symptom diary likhe. And they should say, okay, okay, now this, suppose there are four foods that the patient is positive to. Tell the patient to avoid all those four things for two months completely. And after that, you start one food in one week, second food in second week, third food, third week. And then they should write, ki, haan, ye food rene se, kya mere allergies badi, kya mere rashes badi. Foods are mostly, I have seen, responsible for uh, skin allergies. And uh, isolated allergic rhinitis is quite rare. But I mean, I've seen it, but it's not the first thing that comes to mind. Environmental control when dust mites. So you have to give these uh, things sorry, in writing. Uh, the cap. Ji. Any Ji, adverse sir? effect of the skin prick test? No, sir. Any anaphylactic reaction? No, sir. Never. Any prerequisition regarding this test? So let me just finish and then we'll we'll take the questions later. Okay. Thank you. So uh, dust mite avoidance. Uh, for you tell the patient to remove carpet, dry floor, soft toys, cushions, books from the bedroom. Tell them that the bedroom should only have a bed and everything else should be inside. A Suppose you have books, then you cover the bookshelf with glass. Whatever bedding, etc., show pieces, everything should be inside cupboards. Nothing should be outside. What happens is most of the time the maid will clean in India. You have people cleaning. And once in a month they have a cleaner or they clean themselves. But uh, nobody is going to clean your books. So books which are dust mite cut, they are phenomenal. And tell the patient to change their bed sheets and pillow covers every three days. Ask them to sundry the mattress and pillow once a month if it's possible. If it's not possible, they should invest in a vacuum cleaner. And they wash or their curtains, something that, you know, her Diwali, our curtains dry clean. Hote. But uh, you should ideally vacuum clean your uh, curtains and blinds. If they are washable, then every month, that is the best way to do it. Also, for patients who can afford it, dust mite proof mattress and pillow covers available. These are expensive, but they come with a 25-year life. So, if you want to do it, it's a good option. Environmental control, like I said, pets, you have to tell them that remove them from your bedroom. And uh, a lot of patients sleep with their pets. So, that's something that you have to work on them and tell them that, Isko at least sofa tak le jau, drawing room tak le jau, bedroom se band kar. So rodent control, cockroach extermination, all of that can be done in patients with the, and any obvious fungus aapke bedroom ya kahi hai, to usko definitely uh, plumber ko bula ke, painter ko bula ke, thik karwa hai. So uh, this is a very nice study that says that uh, in uh, 696 children with atopy, just the using uh, dust imperme uh, mite impermeable mattress casing reduce the sensitization by 4%. So, uh, and another, this one is a patch study where early immunotherapy uh, prevented asthma formation by 50%. So, if you intervene early, especially in children and teenagers, I take allergic rhinitis very seriously because I don't want this child to become an asthmatic on my watch. So, this is a little bit of attention. Allergen immunotherapy is very safe. It is basically administered gradually increasing quantities of the vaccine to the subject, reaching a dose which is effective in ameliorating the symptoms associated with the, uh, so that when they are exposed to the, uh, the dust mite or the pollen, subsequently, they do not show symptoms. Sometimes what happens is the patient reaches the top tolerable dose early. You have four concentration twice a week, gradually it is increasing. But sometimes the patient even first dose mein unko lagta hai ki nahi, mera to cold bad hai. So then you have to dilute it further. So basically allergy treatment is personalized therapy. It is not one size fits all. Allergy treatment is given variable depending on the patient's allergy test. So her patient ka jo treatment protocol jo hai ya uh, jo, uh, jo medicine mix hai, it will be different because it will be tailor made to them. That's why it's very specific and you should do it with a comfortable bend of mind. Ye ki mera surgeon, mera patient leta hua, wait kar hai, jaldi, jaldi, jaldi karu. Give allergy needs time. Each patient takes one and a half hours. Once you have to sit with them, counsel them, answer all their questions because they are coming to you from so far. Wo itne parishan ho ke aaye hote aapke paas. You are their last resort and hope. So understand the importance of that interaction. Jaldi, jaldi mein mat dekho. Aram se dekho, unke sare question answer karo. So that they go back with confidence and half of, I mean, you know, uh, treatment also is a lot of faith. If they have faith that yes, this doctor will suit me, it will be a lot of difference. 
So immunotherapy, area position paper is that it is not recommended for mild and intermittent allergic rhinitis, but it is uh, 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 expected for uh, moderate or severe intermittent allergic rhinitis. And all patients with persistent allergic rhinitis, whether they're mild, moderate, or severe, it is uh, recommended. And in asthma also, intermittent asthma, allergic asthma, it's not recommended. Mild, persistent, and moderate persistent, it's recommended. Again, in severe uncontrolled asthma, we do not start immunotherapy. So this is a pathophysiology of allergy. All of you know it that you know you have uh, uh, you have the uh, Ig allergen comes, it gets attached to the uh, uh, mast cells, it releases the mediators. There some of them cause early and some of them cause late phase symptoms. And uh, uh, then of course you know the whole process of how Ig is formed. All of you don't. Yeah, I'm sure theoretically you all are very strong, but how does the immunotherapy act? A lot of patients will ask you. One, it acts on your antigen-presenting cells. Second, it acts on your Th2 cells. The sec third, it acts on your B cells. It prevents, uh, it produces blocking antibodies. So over a period of time, uh, you will find that there's a sustained and long-term effect of the immunotherapy and the patients have a, 90% of the patients have a good response. So initially, if you have a patient who's saying ki, uh, uh, my Ig is rising, so a regular Ig, like I said, is of no use, but delayed on a long, initially the Ig may rise, but later on it'll definitely fall. And your SPT, skin prick testing, although sometimes the patient says, I want to get a skin prick done after my immunotherapy three years is done, I've done it, I've showed them and it comes negative. But uh, most of the time I tell them, don't waste your money, as long as you're symptomatically better, it's fine. So Ig, initially there will be an increase in specific Ig, gradually it will fall. For me, what's important is that clinical improvement is happening. The Indian position paper is that Ig, uh, it can be done on without any age limit on the upper age limit and uh, skin treatment should be done uh, properly. Uh, yeah, I've already covered all this. So indications are failure of medical management. If patient says that when I take the drug, I'm fine, but after the drug, I have allergy. Ho jata hai. So that's the patient that you should attempt. Poor quality of life. They say that my normal life is getting affected. I'm not able to sleep adequately. Uh, it's affecting my concentration. There's so many patients who come and say, Ki, nobody wants to sit with me in my office because post-COVID people are so aware that infections are that they don't understand that allergies and infection are two separate things. Many times I've had to give written uh, certificates to a principal and say hey, this is an allergic rhinitis child he's not and he or she's not infecting their colleagues so please let them attend classes and of course patients with recurrent uh, AFRS so ideally after the second surgery of the patient has polyps immediately after the second surgery you should start immunotherapy so contraindications age is not a contraindication comorbidities if they have uncontrolled diabetes hypertension cancer then, of course, those are things that are important to control. Pregnancy, we do not start immunotherapy. But if the patient is previously taking immunotherapy, it works well and they're able to, it actually has a good benefit on the child. And if the patient says that they have had a, a hypersensitivity to a previous immunotherapy, then you have to be very cautious. And uh, I'm, then you actually take them for oral immunotherapy. Oral immunotherapy, so there are no side effects. So, so yeah, so Ig mediated disease hona chahi. Obviously, we skin prick test ke baad hi immunotherapy shuru kar sakte. We cannot give immunotherapy on the basis of a blood test. Please, this is very important. I know page doctors who are giving you immunotherapy on the basis of your blood test. That is strictly, strictly not allowed. So, koi kar raha hai, to unko mana karo. Aap properly skin prick test karo. Nahi kar sakte to kisi se karwao. Skin prick test ke bina immunotherapy nahi dena hai. Bilkul bhi. Ever. There is no indication. Right, so sensitization should be relevant for the symptoms. Ye nahi ki patient ke allergies jo hai, wo seasonal pollen ke hai, or uh, so jo aapki skin prick test mein hai. But the patient has symptoms of uh, uh, of persistent allergic rhinitis. Then you must always coordinate correlate the skin prick test with the symptoms before you decide that this is the right immunotherapy approach. You should also see that the patient will be compliant. Don't jump and say ki uh, I always tell them, read up about it, discuss with your physician, come back to me, read online, ask me any doubts you have, because I don't want to be the person running after them to sell immunotherapy. I want them to be running after me to give them immunotherapy. The difference is that then their 
uh, acceptability will be better. They will take the medicine properly. A lot of time we have seen that six months may itna acha fayda hota that they don't come back for follow up. And many many patients they leave the medicine after one year. So that is a challenge that we have to tell them that if you complete the course for three years, the effect will be next ten to fifteen years. So. They, we have to our uh, clinic and say we follow up on them. I try that somebody call them and says that your immunotherapy is complete. So you go ahead. Patient compliance is very important. Refrigeration sh should be available. Now this is a challenge for one the poor patients and uh, second children who are living in the hostel. So there. I give a letter to their dean and a lot of our uh, modern hostels have medical rooms. And uh, they they are able to put it in their uh, medical thing. Otherwise, थोड़ा सा challenging होता है ये. All right. So indication for immunotherapy we have already done this. Contraindication is that uh, active malignancy like I already said, psychological disorders. Any patient who is on beta blockers, you should not give them immunotherapy. Should ask the uh, physician to change the beta the antihypertensive from a beta blocker. And uh, so the only contraindication for sublingual immunotherapy is they have active lichen planus or uh, severe ulcers and uh, periodontal disease. But usually, I mean, I have not faced any issue with this. Uh, pregnancy, like I said, do not start doing immunotherapy the, during pregnancy. But if they have been taking it, they can easily get pregnant and there's no side effect. So the immunotherapy that we use is subcutaneous and sublingual or oral. Inhalation is uh, and nasal is not available in India, and it's not available actually commercially. It's so uh, you should have uh, cross reactivity, something that you should be concerned about. I'll speak to you. So, uh, fungal allergens cannot be mixed with any kind of uh, uh, any other allergen, insects cannot be mixed with anything, dust, uh, dander cannot be mixed with anything because they have proteases and they will lyse your uh, dust mite and pollen. So, the only thing that can be mixed is uh, in subcutaneous immunotherapy is dust mite and pollen. So dust mite and pollen can be mixed together. Other than that, dander, fungal and cockroach, uh, all, all insects should not be mixed with anything else. And uh, yeah, so like I said, uh, dust mites and pollen can be mixed. Other than that, nothing else should be mixed. Also in oral immunotherapy, you cannot mix any subset. So you can only give up to five pollens together. Or you can give up to three dust mites together, or you can insects or uh, molds. You can molds. You can uh, mix up to five molds, but your oral immunotherapy should not contain more than five allergens, and not different subsets cannot be mixed. I know people who are mixing 12, 12 allergens and giving, and it. I just don't understand whether it's a placebo effect that it makes the patients get better or not. Subcutaneous immunotherapy has been in vogue for many, many years, more than 120 years. And uh, uh, build-up phase is given. The first dose is very important that you have to give with all your precautions. You put your avil, dexamet uh, dexamethasone, adrenaline, everything ready. And uh, ideally, you do it in an ICU or uh, at least an emergency setting that someone is available. But uh, oral immunotherapy is very easy. So, so I follow the standardized schedule. I do not do accelerated ever. There are for theoretically, there are cluster immunotherapy and rush immunotherapy and ultra rush, but I do not use it ever. So injections are twice a week injections for six months. The first dose, I give it to them and then I tell them they can go to their local GP and they have to sit up for at least 30 minutes after their injection. There are some patients who say, hey, our is nurse hai, ya laga dega, then that they can do it. But ideally, they should go to a, a place where 24-hour emergency is available to take the injection. That is the safest way. And then it's very convenient afterward because our first 48 injections is def definitely painful. But then it's just once a month injection. It's very, very convenient. So most patients feel comfortable. Now I've been using oral immunotherapy. Oh, there are a few. Uh, always check the, uh, uh, even when your uh, emergency kit, so always check the expiry of the adrenaline because adrenaline expires in three to four months. So every few months, usko apna check kud kar liya kariye. and uh, you should keep the patient under observation for 30 minutes and see that there is no, uh, uh, the patient doesn't develop any generalized symptoms like sweating, uh, feeling weak or breathless. If that is the case, then you have to treat it accordingly. Local reactions like uh, uh, flare and edema, just you can give them an ice pack. But if they have a severe reaction, then you have to uh, give them uh, 
you treat the accordingly you know systemic reactions are uh, graded by yaki into grade 1 2 3 and 4 one is non specific reactions mild discomfort headache etc systemic mild reactions like rhinitis or asthma non life threatening reactions like urticaria angioedema or severe asthma and four is anaphylaxis all of these have to obviously be treated accordingly so i am not going into detail so oral immunotherapy is something that has come into our armamentarium in 2015 uh, december once uh, fda approved it so like i said you can't mix the things but it's very safe it is just so easy the patient doesn't have to go anywhere and ideally they should not take it themselves because they tend to over medicate so ideally somebody in the family should give it or otherwise they have to see it in the mirror and then give the medicine it's twice a week uh, drops for at least one year so that is a little tedious because the patient has to remember to take it for a year and kai baar they have a traveling job or they want to go on holiday so you have to explain that that medicine has to go with them and then the maintenance is once a week i find it very 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 effective it is as effective as uh, subcutaneous immunotherapy and this is right now what i use mostly 90% of the patients i start with in uh, sublingual immunotherapy and in uh, three patients when they did not have any response after one year of uh, oral then i shifted them to injectable and they got a good response so we can keep injectable as a standby or a backup option instead of the main thing there are no side effects local you may have burning etc but i have never seen this they do not i have never seen abdominal pain or diarrhea so uh, uh, suspend the medicine but i have not seen a reaction and i have given to a lot lot patients so it's very safe oral immunotherapy is safe immunotherapy per se is safe there are no long term fatal uh, studies there are so many studies but they say that it's very safe and no, it was the improved uh, efficacy over uh, medication early onset yes, within sir, a few weeks someone speaking ek baat bolu dr pritam sir please mute kar lijiye iske liye achhe hain anyway sustained yeah. increase long term efficacy prevents newer sensitization this is very important prevents asthma this is of course utmost important as far as youngsters are concerned reduces the need for steroids and it is very cost effective over time so like you can see both the things uh, pharmacotherapy and some immunotherapy have effect on allergen uh, specific asthma and they both effective but uh, immunotherapy over time reduces the need for medicine it has an increased effect over time it has a long term efficacy and disease modifying effect prevents newer sensitization so it's very important a little word about uh, nasal polyps nasal poly uh, chronic rhinosinusitis with nasal polyps is definitely challenging there is a recurrence rate of 5 to 20% and uh, how do you reduce the uh, need uh, if the patient has uh, allergic rhinitis very severe allergic rhinitis with polyps and that's the person that you should consider that because there are various studies says that atopy is present in 50% of the patients and skin prick tests were positive in more than 60% of the patients so if you add uh, immunotherapy it, it reduces the chance of recurrence which is obviously a very good thing so polyp recurrence is higher in allergic patients so even though there is uh, uh, there are certain studies that says that immunotherapy is not statistically influencing the middle meatus patency but there are also studies that say that allergic patients who undergo immunotherapy do lot better than those who do not undergo immunotherapy and there are various multiple studies available that say that recurrence of polyps reduces after immunotherapy so of course uh, like you all know nasal polyps are a medical disease we do surgery only to open up the airway and make the sinuses accessible to intranasal corticosteroids so if you make immunotherapy and allergy testing immunotherapy a part of your post op treatment it will reduce your recurrence rates and especially patients with asthma and allergic rhinitis if you have patients who are highly symptomatic it's always good to tell them that yeah this is what you should do uh there is a limited role of surgery in allergy tell your patients that allergy will not treat with get treated because pichle generation ke log the na haddi tedi hai isliye chinke aati hai this is something that we used to very commonly see a patient say ji haddi bad gayi hai wo kyun bolenge haddi bad gayi hai jab tak aap nahi bolenge to aap ne ye nahi bolna aapki generation kabhi aise unscientific baat na kare to acha hai tell the patient that आपका सेप्टम डिवेटेड है लेकिन इसकी मैं सर्जरी कर भी दूंगा चार छह महीने बाद आपके एलर्जिक सिम्टम्स वापस आएंगे बिकॉज तो आपने एलर्जी को ट्रीट नहीं किया है तो गिव देम टू इन राइटिंग सो दैट दे डोंट लिटिगेट आफ्टरवर्ड्स 
endoscopic sinus surgery, if you have polyps, gross DNA should be removed, adenoid should be removed. And I've been doing allergy for a long time. I've got a good response. And uh, the important thing that my is that more than 90% of the patient, their sneezing stop. And uh, more than 88% of the patient did not need uh, poly, uh, rev rev revision surgery even after five years. And uh, hyperreactive airway disease, I was able to get off almost every child who underwent immunotherapy for uh, house dust mite of the nebulizer, which I think is a very, very important thing in today's day and age. And for urticaria, I isolated, I do not give immunotherapy unless everything else fails. And I tell the patient with caution that, yeah, it may be needed. So there are three steps to allergy treatment. One is identification, which we do in the form of the test. Second is avoidance. And the last is immunotherapy. So allergen avoidance and immunotherapy are the only two things that can change the uh, modify the course of an allergic disease, even according to WHO and uh, WAO. And immunotherapy is very effective and safe. So why don't you give this to your patients? So I just want to tell you allergy is treatable. And I hope that you will give your patients the benefit of your knowledge. And all of you will train in allergies. So I'll be happy to take any questions. We can start with Dr. Ranga, sir. Uh, sir, please unmute yourself. Uh, sir, please unmute yourself. So you are still uh, muted. Ranga, sir, please unmute yourself. Sir, un unmute, unmute, sir. Mute, sir. Uh, yes. Sir, can you okay? Can you can you hear me? Any pre-question to skin? I have regarding skin yes. prick test. Whether we yes, should sir. start or continue the antihistamic nasal spray uh, during that test, or we should stop at least how many days? Sir, three to seven days. Ideally, you have to stop the test. Uh, the antihistamines or oral, oral steroids, all antihistamines, all bronchodilators have to be stopped at least three to five days. But Sometimes, especially urticaria patients are not able to live without it. So the thing is that bilastine and fexofenidin and levocetrin should be stopped at least five to seven days before. But cetrizin you can even take up to 48 hours. So ideally two days to bilkul hi allergy uh, antihistamine free period hona chahiye. Oral steroid five days before and bronchodilators also three days. But their patients can take nasal steroid. They can take inhaled corticosteroid. They can take their nebulizer. All of that can continue even on the date of the test. If we take this medicine, what is the false rate of test positivity? False test will not come, sir. Your induration will not come. Because I have a control histamine and saline. That is the first thing that we prick. So if histamine doesn't give you an induration and if saline is showing you a lot of reaction, that means your test is not accurate and you must not do it at all. So if a patient says that I शायद कल दवाई खाया है तो मैं हिस्टमिन और सलाइन पहले करती हूँ अगर हिस्टमिन में इंड्यूरेशन चार एमएम से ज्यादा है तब भी हम टेस्ट करेंगे वरना हम टेस्ट करेंगे नहीं और अगर आपने कर भी लिया तो उसको आपको रिपीट करना पड़ेगा आफ्टर अ वीक सो डोंट वेस्ट योर एफर्ट एंड डोंट वेस्ट द पेशेंट्स टाइम क्योंकि आपको तो दोबारा टेस्ट कर तो पैसे मिलेगा नहीं तो जब एक बार करो तो अच्छे से करो तो बिल्कुल भी आपने इस पर शॉर्टकट नहीं थैंक यू थैंक यू सर सारिका आई गॉट ए क्वेश्चन जी सर I'm Dr. Bhargav. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar. My very basic question is that when we are coming to the anti-histamine in the bazaar, there are so many of them. Tetrazine, Levocetrazine, Combination, Fexofenadine, Bilastine. In your experience, what is best and how to choose it for an allergic patient? Sir, because this is an academic program, I'll tell you... Uh, what I ideally use, I like fexofenidine very much, responds very well. But uh, about 2% of the patients say that fexofenidine is not a problem. It is safe for pilots to fly. Then bilastine works well, but in about 90% of the patients. Some patients say that, one, of course, you have to tell the patient in writing and explain that it will interact with food. So, you have food say uh at least a half one hour before food or after two hours after food so yeah 
आपको क्लियरली पे हर पेशेंट को बताना पड़ता है आई लाइक बिलास्टिन एंड बिलास्टिन यूजली आई प्रिफर टू राइट अ लोन नॉट इन कॉम्बिनेशन विद मॉन्टिलुकस जबकि बहुत सारे मॉन्टिलुकस वाले कंपनीज विल पुश यू की आप कॉम्बिनेशन लिखो तो हमने कंपनीज को सकम नहीं करना बिकॉज एट द एंड ऑफ द डे वी आर आंसरेबल टू आर पेशेंट्स एंड नॉट टू द फार्मा कंपनीज दे डोंट आइदर ओनर्स दे एंड वी ओ देम नथिंग अगर वो कुछ कर रहे हैं तो अपने मार्केटिंग के लिए कर रहे हैं बट हमारे पेशेंट अगर हमें पैसे देता है आर बेस्ट इंटरेस्ट शुड ऑलवेज बी फॉर द पेशेंट सो प्रेफरेबली फेक्सिन इज माई ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस लोरेटिडीन आई लाइक आई राइट अ लॉट इट्स माई ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस बिलास्टिन आई राइट इन बट सो ऑल ऑफ दीज यू सी सम पेशेंट विल से दैट आपको इससे प्रॉब्लम है अगर कोई पेशेंट में लिवर या किडनी डिजीज है देन यू शुड बिलास्टिन शुड बी योर फर्स्ट ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस See, I have got lot of my friends who are pilots. Okay, and obviously because I remained in Air Force and I had remained in some establishment which dealt with the medical examination of not uh, service pilots, defence pilots, but civil pilots also. <laughs> so, with even two percent of uh, this thing drowsiness, I think uh, any pilot who is on anti-seminic. that's what that's what i used to do i used to tell them that don't fly with the if you are taking anti histaminic drugs so that is there because even bilastin fexofenadine cetirizine to khair hai hi levocetirizine also and loratadine also personal experience is that yes it causes drowsiness to some extent at least stunting of your brain this thing and some sort of you know grogginess it will be there with antihistaminics hello sir ji what is legally allowed is the guidelines you have to follow and what you do personally is totally up to you no uh, no no i am not talking personally ji this is not personally i worked in an establishment which is known as air force central medical establishment which dealt with the pilots hai na so there was some icao rules international civil aviation organization rules according to them pilot who is on anti histaminic drug should avoid filing excellent sir perfect very yeah. good so that, that is what my message it is it is not my question it is message to other youngsters and other people yeah if we are putting any pilot on uh, anti histaminic drug and tell them not to fly you have to give it in writing not to fly thank you thank you sir am i audible hello yes sir han ji sir yeah, yeah. Uh, more questions please dr ravi also had some query we have ravi hello sir we have some uh, questions in the chat box so we can take yes, a yes, uh, uh, yeah raman go ahead go ahead we have so got a few minutes now yes, uh, so ma'am we uh, the first question is for how long hetrazin should be given फेलोशिपेंडिक so there are uh, there's one send a course being done by dr anand pendulkar in bangalore he's been doing for many years i think 13 14 years he's been doing it's a good certified course he first takes 6 months online and then 5 days offline when he calls you you have to go and stay there residential course hai. it's a good course and it's quite economical also i say velor may be a course hai, but velor is an expensive course it's really expensive and you have to go there multiple times at the end of it in fact uh, they don't teach you immunotherapy which i find is a big problem to agar aapko allergy testing sirf seek ke aana hai to that doesn't make sense you should at least come out as a certified uh, expert so this dr pendulkar's course is very good right ma'am uh, so ma'am i have few uh, points to ask ma'am uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, we should uh, ensure that the uh, investigation like ig and ac should be done from a good lab so how how do you ensure that the patient if he or she is getting a report whether it is done from a good lab or not any nabl lab will be a good lab isme ek aajkal to standardization har jagah hai okay okay so ma'am uh, uh, i have uh, i have operated one patient who was a case of crs with nasal polyposis unilateral 
so after uh, almost an year he uh, came to me and uh, on endoscopy uh, i could see he was not having any kind of complaints but uh, he came to me and uh, there was some polypoidal changes in the mucosa in the right side so i got his uh, ige levels done so they were uh, more than uh, three times uh, the level of uh, normal so when should we uh, give the allergy so he doesn't have any allergic symptoms so is the uh, yes. recurrence is the uh, reason for that see if your polyps are coming back one you have to ask and ensure are they taking the nasal spray or not if you have not given a nasal spray then you are uh, uh, liable for the recurrence and if you have not explained to them, then they are also. And if you have given to them in writing and said ki lena hi lena hai, if they are not taking it, I, I in fact had this discussion with Dr. Janki Ramanan. He said pediatrics way most of the time why you have a higher rate of recurrence is not just because of disease activity. Also, these children are not very good with the nasal wash and the nasal sprays. So you have to ensure and ask the patient ki har mein spray le rahe ho, twice a week le rahe ho, once a week le rahe ho. Agar bilkul surgery ke baad bhool jayenge ki haan kuch hua tha, to phir aapko recurrence to aega hi aega. Spray to aapko dena padega. There is no right. choice. Uh, so ma'am, any comments on the posterior nasal neurectomy? In case of persistent allergy. I mean, doctor, uh, our friend Nahila Sami has been saying for almost 15-20 years, he's been doing it. But he's a one-off person. And now recently there's a uh, interest in this uh, because internationally some paper came out that, you know, uh, this, this is an option available. I'm sure Dr. Ravi, you can do 20 cases, have a, a postgraduate, do a thesis and tell us how effective it is. Because if it is, ideally what I have seen, the indications include uh, non, uh, no, if they do, a patient has a negative skin prick test or if they are not responding to medical management or immunotherapy, that is the indication for uh, post-nasal erectomy. So just because we are surgeons, so we should not be trigger happy, you know. This is what I've learned from my seniors. We should be very clear about who to operate and who not to operate. So we, the, the more conservative you are in your uh, surgical case, the better results you will get. Or jitne jada aise ye, uh, you know, unnecessary surgeries karenge, to fir damages bhi to hote because general anesthesia, or forget general anesthesia, even giving an injection has gone any anaphylaxis. And uh, why play with the lives of your patients? So yes, you should do it. And I would genuinely recommend that Maulana if they can do a study because we, you have so many we patients. Have done, we have done non-allergic rhinitis. Yes, yes. We, we, uh, we if you a, have, we, no, no, you yeah. do a skin prick test. You see, okay. the, identify the non-allergic rhinitis patients. And right. then you do a nasal urectomy. It will be a very good guideline for the entire country that the non-allergic rhinitis hai, they are, who are not responding to medical management. For them, this is a good option. Let us not jump and say ki har patient ko, you know, every patient with allergic rhinitis will do a urectomy because then you will get bad results. Then right. you will, uh, I mean, then that's you know, true. that's how surgery gets into disrepute and let's never do anything wrong for our patients. Absolutely, ma'am. So, uh, sir, Dr. Patel comments. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for such a wonderful presentation, Dr. Sarika. I have heard you a number of times on this topic. <laughs> and I I always learn something new every time I hear you on this topic. It's an excellent presentation. You, and uh, I think uh, the youngsters who all are participating in this webinar, they will be benefited greatly uh, with your immense experience into this. Few years back, allergology or allergologists were a new concept for all of us. But I really appreciate the way you are taking this topic ahead across all over the country. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. So uh, just just a small question that I would want to ask you is: there are a number of patients who come to our routine OPD complaining of recurrent throat irritation and infection. You know, they uh, they say like every second month, like they have this throat irritation. So is there a, a kind of a correlation because of the post-nasal drip that could be happening or is it because of some kind of a food allergy or do you uh, correlate chronic acidity with food allergens, food allergy where a regurg is happening and that is causing constant throat irritation? Multiple factors are there for pharyngitis, allergic pharyngitis bhi ho sakta hai. It can be a reflux like LPR. And it can be a post-nasal discharge. So you have to specifically ask for that. 
also pollution is a very big irritant i mean in uh, i remember when we were small the moment we used to land in delhi by the time from the airport to the house uh, you everyone your throat used to get choked up because air quality was really really bad at that time then the government had that uh, sheila dikshit government had changed it to cng buses and it had a drastic impact and it reduced the uh, pollution at that time very drastically so i am talking about maybe 25 30 years back so similarly abhi ye wala jo mausam hai next one and a half diwali ke baad about 15 days parali jalne se leke diwali tak it is difficult even for us if you are sleeping in the afternoon you feel like you are choking up so multiple things are there of course antihistamines and uh, nasal sprays and uh, antacids all three can be given and tried whatever works but i usually give the patient medicine for four weeks and see how they respond and many of do the patients get better do you recommend the patients of chronic acidity you know who probably some patients specifically mentions that with these food items they get chronic acidity or retching and heartburn and all those things so do you do skin prick test to find out about the food allergens in these yeah, cases yeah. food allergies uh, have an impact not on allergic rhinitis but food like i have isolated patients who come specifically and say ki mujhe bloating hoti hai so i want to get a skin prick test just for food right, right. also eosinophilic esophagitis like you know we discussed the other day so that also if you are able to identify the food and you are able to avoid that food then that is the easiest way out so what is the difference between food allergy and food intolerance they both are very different food allergy is a ig mediated subset but the food intolerance can be igm mediated so that's why when we avoid the food for two months we eliminate that particular food from the diet if it after two months if they take one food per week so by the time what happens is the gut mucosa changes every two and a half weeks in two months time it would have changed three times so maybe the igm jo protein hote hai wo badal jate hain and i have seen that lot of time the food they are able to tolerate but so that is intolerance get can we can treat by doing avoidance food first we identify then we tell them to avoid and then we do the oral food challenge where we do one food per week which the patient can do at their own uh, setup or uh, another thing is uh, yeah things like prawn brings like nuts these are and egg these are lifelong allergens so uh, if a patient has a shrimp allergy or an egg allergy then you will tell them that not to start it again and peanut for example these are lifelong allergies so isko the oral food challenge bhi attempt mat kare because that can end up in anaphylaxis but then as far as eggs are concerned there are number of people who would say you avoid the uh, yolk and you know you can have the egg white so aap aur bhi challenge kar ko ek bar egg white dekh ke dekho if they tolerate it well then do the yolk because obviously there are so many vegetarians in the world and you know they are not protein deficient agar nahi suit kar raha you can't fight your body that's what i tell the patient because uh, just imagine the uh, these the side effects are that you can have an anaphylaxis so i have seen patients with very severe allergies in fact one patient i had to do the skin prick test in the operation theater with consent for laryn uh, tracheostomy tracheostomy with our ent friend standing next to me that was the severity of her allergies ki usko uh, laryngeal edema uvula edema tongue was swelling up and then during the process we made her sit up because she was feeling breathless we gave her oxygen and i did not let them start the uh, uh, anti histamines and adrenaline until i had done the reading maine kaha jo jiske liye kar rahe hain so allergies can be you know life threatening the other day i read an article is very sad that a child uh, who was allergic to milk he went to a party and had just cheese sandwich and died 16 year old boy so allergies can take lives and uh, uh, at least now when we create awareness pehle to you know agar food allergies ki awareness is so limited in india uh, day care wagaira mein they don't know and when you see australia all the even the nurses and the day care teachers etc they are so well informed on how to treat how to use an epipen but in india they think ki nahi ji hot mein soji sha to koi chinti kaat gayi hogi nobody is thinking of angioedema nobody is thinking of allergies at all so people say ki food allergies are not common in india they are very common but they are under diagnosed and yes. they definitely not treated last question the cost of immunotherapy for a patient 
so uh, i charge 15 to 16000 for a one year course so uh, that is about uh, 1200 to 1500 rupees 1200 rupees a month which is fairly effect cost effective so i usually give them six months therapy so to break down the cost further taki ek baar mein unko 16000 na dena pade so i give them six months and i tell them at five and a half months you please take the next six months course ek to unko confidence bhi aa jata hai that they are getting better and second if they need to be diluted or uh, then we are able to review them so six months pe ek baar review positively ho jata hai otherwise these patients were getting lost to follow up at one year so nowadays i have started giving for six months and i ask them that even on a video consultation you don't have to come back to me again after i've done your skin practice video consult pe hum or a video phone call pe hum log follow up kar lete hain and each and every patient of mine till date the last 20 years i have a physical record of theirs available so even the patient who have done an allergy test with me 15 years back they'll say ji dr saab 2003 mein 4 mein test kiya tha so i take out the record and I, then we are able to compare how much is the improvement so i've been very meticulous about that so that i think is something that everybody should also do do you do a repeat skin prick test after 3 years of completion of i don't usually because reactive. i think it's useless waste of their money but two patients insisted on doing it and i did it and they were both negative for whatever they had been tested for one was for pollen one was for dust mite and then they had a <coughs> they did not have a response patient asked me but i tell them paisa kyu waste kar rahe if you are symptomatically better obviously you must be negative okay ji thank you thank you so uh, dr pasi sir any comments sir yes yes i before that because i i thought uh, let the moderators not be the main question answer question but uh, bhushan uh, ended up <laughs> asking uh, most of the things anyway the, these are all uh, important things to, uh, to know uh, but uh, please ask if there is any other uh, uh, query uh, from uh, anyone to dr sarika if if not then i have one one query uh, dr sarika uh, have you designed some uh, uh, questionnaire or or a or a performa where you wherein you put in uh, fixed uh, questions uh, in the history examination i mean these are the things that must be asked as you I said have, in the beginning itself i have so the allergy test form that i have that i have almost 25 to 30 questions very detailed history whatever i have covered today each and every point of this is includes whether they have a pet whether someone around them smokes whether they are veg or non veg whether they have a family history of allergy whether they have comorbidities with each and everything that i covered today is in that form in fact i'll show it to you once will you will you like to circulate that form no sir i would like <laughs> i feel intellectual right, property for this reason intellectual property sab log apni mehnat kare seekhe to acha rahega चलिए ठीक है तो आई थिंक वी कैन वाइंड अप डॉक्टर रमन थैंक यू फॉर द एक्सटेंसिव डिस्कशन एंड लॉट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट वाज जनरेटेड टुडे एंड सारिका हैज सिंपलीफाइड एंड शी हैज टच्ड मोस्ट ऑफ द थिंग्स इन द मोस्ट प्रैक्टिकल वे एंड द मैकेनिज्म एंड दोस प्रैक्टिकल थिंग्स शी हैज कवर्ड इन द लास्ट सो द थिंग्स वर वेरी बिगनिंग टिल द एंड So thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, we can wind it up, uh, Dr. Ramesh yes, and uh, the secretary and the president of here. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. So, ma'am, I completely agree with your statement that uh, uh, the fifteen minutes which were given to you was uh, never justified to cover this. Yes. Topic. And today I'm very happy that uh, we were able to uh, complete this topic as a whole in uh, one year. So thank you very much. Uh, so I would mm -hmm. like to request Dr. Pindaranga sir to please uh, so wind up the session. i think it was well conducted and very interactive session on allergy rhinitis it is very informative to undergraduate post graduate who are appearing in the exams dr sarika it is a wonderful discussion you work very hard on this topic of allergy rhinitis thank you sir congratulations and thank you from the uh, aoi haryana also and thanks to stalwarts of ent dr jc pasi dr bhushan patil who accept our invitation as a moderator thank you sir thank you dr bhushan thank you dr jc pasi and thank you our president dr surender singhal and uh, brain behind this whole show 
Dr. Raman Sharma. Dr. Raman Sharma always worked very hard and they used to phone me every time, Sir, this is now complete. Quickly, quickly, do this. Thank you, Dr. Raman, for Thank making you, sir, it for your effective guidance. and fruitful session to the uh, uh, undergraduates and the postgraduate. Thank you, Dr. Ravi Meir, Dr. Bhargav, and all ones for uh, logging this uh, Zoom meeting today. Uh, it is an information and announcement and request to all one that AOI Haryana State Conference is being going to organize that SGT Gurgaon on 26th and uh, 25th and 26th November at SGT Gurgaon. I request you all to please, 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 please attend that conference. I think would, uh, that would be the uh, best conference of this uh, region of Gurgaon. And in advance, I say happy Diwali to all. Thank you. Thank you, Diwali, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Same happy to you. Diwali, Same to you. Thank 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 you.